The topic of this seminar is how to be grounded, how to have a strong identity, and how to stop giving your power away. Okay, you see this in the mainstream, but also in the self-help and spiritual world. Okay, I see it more and more in a lot of clients when they start working with me, they have no idea who they are, they have no idea what they value, they have no idea what they want, and they're desperately seeking external advice on tell me who I am, what I value, and how I should live my life. It's absolutely insane. It's like we have you know, adults where deep down inside, it's still a child running them. Right? It's a lot of people who simply haven't graduated childhood or even high school, and you have these high schoolers running about like, validation, validation, tell me what I should do, what's the good life, what's the secret, what's the secret, tell me, tell me. And they go from teacher to teacher to course to course to this style of spirituality, to this style of self-help, to this mythology, just bouncing around. And guess what, if that's you, you're gonna be bouncing around a very long time. If you go into self-help thinking someone's going to give you a better plan for life than, say, the mainstream, you're going to have a very hard time. Before you even engage in anything in terms of learning, you better be clear on who you are and where you're going. What's your ideal life? What's your goal here? Everyone knows what they don't want. It's like, well, I don't want this. I don't want that. I'm working on myself because this thing, and I want to avoid that. What do you want? Let's just say right now things went amazingly well for you, starting now amazingly well. Today, tomorrow, this week, like, what would that look like? Say everything went according to plan for the next seven days. What would change in your life? Say everything went according to plan for the next year, the next five years. What does that look like? Where are you at in five years? Everything goes according to plan. Do you know? Do you know vividly, precisely? If you had to think of a typical day in the life, where are you living? What's your social life like? What are your friends like? What about your relationship situation? What about your work situation? You gotta be really clear on that. That's your win. This is going to be your compass, by the way. People jump into self-help, for example. They're like, hey, let's get productive. You don't even know what's productive if you don't know where you're going. And it's not just any end goal, because a lot of people write down some ideal life based upon their ego. It's what do you authentically want? You gotta write this down, you gotta be clear. Because then every little piece of advice, anything you do, it will only be productive if it's aligned with that ideal life. And it has to be personal. You'll see people in the self-help world like this where they cannot be friends with anyone who isn't all about success. And they have this distorted view where they believe that anyone who is successful only hangs out with other successful people. That's not true. That's a myth. Sure, of course, there might be some, but for the most part, guess what? You have to realize there's more to a human than just self-help. That's the newbie distorted view, self-help, I only wanna do that. They cut off all their friends, cut off their family. It's like only successful people, only productive talking. Is that really your ideal life? If everything goes according to plan, is that your ideal life? To be in a reality where every bit of conversation is always productive, always moving forward, always about accomplishing a goal, always about succeeding, always about improving yourself. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty terrible. If that's all your conversations, all you're doing, and the only people you hang out with, that's not what I signed up for. I hang out, and this shocks people, with, yes, extremely successful people, but I also hang out with people who are not into self-help. I hang out with people who hate spirituality. I hang out with people who don't do much, they play video games, they drink, they do drugs. And those are my friends. Why? Because once more, there's more to a human than self-help. Now, this will determine how much time I do spend with them, by the way, and in what context. And this, once more, has to be linked to your ideal life, right? Where are you moving towards? If things go according to plan, sure, right? If you're like someone who's very business-focused, you want to improve, you want to succeed, say, financially, so on and so forth, yes, for the most part, you will be with a lot of successful people. But what about outside of that? What about during your free time? Who are the people you might be joking around with? Times where, hey, let's just not be productive at all and let's just enjoy each other's company. You should have that in your life too. For me, during my week, I schedule work time, but I also schedule mess around time. Time where I actually schedule it in, where I do nothing productive. You should do this. You'll see people kind of yo-yo. They go like extreme work, 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 then they fall off. And then they work, 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 fall off. Why? Because they don't add that balance. Okay, but this is key. You know, another example is I have this friend, and I talked about this in many videos, 
from Switzerland back in the day, and we used to do a lot of music together. He's not in self-help at all, but I'll still hang out with him. Not all of the time, of course, but I'll hang out with him. Not in every context, but in a context where we talk about music. Why? Because that's also good for the soul. So you've got to determine, what do you want exactly? And don't just get sucked into the hype. Don't just get sucked into the marketing. What exactly do you want at a core? And then stay true to that. How successful do you want to be? You'll also see people get sucked into this where they're like, my purpose has to be creative, right? Or suddenly everyone wants to be a life coach. Why? Because they see all these videos about being a life coach. Is that truly, deep down inside, what you want to be? Is that your definition of success or have you just been conditioned to believe that? The reason we all think, by the way, that a purpose has to be super creative is the, the only people who talk about it are creative people. All right, I have a friend, for example, who's super into accounting. That's his purpose. He'll sit down behind a computer, no joke. This is his ideal life, by the way, and this might also shock people. His ideal life is he wakes up, he goes behind his computer, he crunches over, and he just crunches numbers all day. That's it, all day. Just behind a computer, crunching numbers, and he loves it. Now, what is everyone probably thinking? What, but that's not all creative. What about him making YouTube videos? What about him coaching? It's like, no, that's his passion. I also know people where they don't actually need or want that much money. And they, for example, enjoy traveling. And that's their passion, that's what they live for. And that there, massive respect. To truly audit if someone's winning or not, it's looking at what they actually wanted if they're doing them. Not trying to live up to some stereotype, it's like doing them. You know, you'll see this too where people want, for example, a partner that will impress their friends. So they're looking to their friends or society to tell them who they should be with. They're looking to their friends or society, or if they don't have friends, like for what friends to have. They're looking to society, to their friends for what kind of lifestyle to have. Stop looking externally, look to you. What do you want? Instead of trying to live up to all these superficial standards, choose your own standards and stay true to those. And success isn't just money, money. It's really asking yourself, what am I in this for? What's the ultimate outcome? If you also don't have that outcome, you're gonna be running around in circles. Okay, for me personally, my ideal life doesn't just consist of work, work, work. There's a lot of family time in there too. Now guess what? Could I, as an example, right now in this moment, double, quadruple my income? Yes or no? I actually could. There's a lot of opportunities where if I just said yes, I would actually make a lot more money. But what would I have to sacrifice for that? Family time. Family time, other things that I care about that I'm not willing to sacrifice. If you're not clear on what you're in this for, what you value, you're gonna be saying yes, no, and you're just gonna be going around in circles, dabbling around. Okay, and this is really these questions you have to ask yourself. Where am I going, right, what do I want? And then what do I value in this moment? Everyone here should make a list of your top 10 values in this moment. Okay, for example, work, family, friendships, romantic relationships, travel, freedom, health, things like that. Let's just say you could only succeed at one. What would be the one you'd pick to succeed at? What's the most important one? This can be tough. You're like, well, kind of all of them. It's like, what if I don't put my family? Does that make me a bad person? No, no, no. Just say, you can only do one. What's the most important one in your life right now? Your social life, whatever it is. Then play a game with yourself and say, okay, let's just say I could do two. What would be the second one I'd pick? What would be the third? Now, with that list, what can you then do? Audit your day-to-day -day life and make sure that you're living in alignment to that list. And that list will change. Okay, those top 10 values is just a snapshot of you right now in the moment. It's like, what do you care about? But let's just say you put health as number one, business as number two, as an example. And you look at your life and all you're doing is business and very little in terms of health. Then something's off. Then you better switch things up. You're not living in alignment. That's what I bring everything back to. It's what do I value in this moment? Bring it back to that. And it will change. Okay, but based upon that list, that number one, you're gonna have to invest a lot of time and energy into it. A lot. People try to succeed at all of them at once. No, no, no. 
you're gonna, it's, we, we call this like spinning plate theory, right? It's like you try to spin a plate, you inject, you inject a lot of energy, a lot of time, and once it's spinning, then you can bring another one out to the surface. Put that one down for a little bit. Then that one's spinning, back to that one a little bit. Get a new one spinning. But that's really how you succeed. And it doesn't, once more, just have to all be about money. Say you wanna work on improving your social life, then what's productive for you is actually going out and socializing. People might say, well, how will that make you money? It's like, it's not just about that. That's part of my ideal life. And what this also means is stop comparing yourself to others. People are like, am I behind? Is this the right time? Am I too old? Is it too late? Well, no. Compare to who? Compare to what? Compare to you, like you're on your unique journey, you're exactly where you need to be. No? You're only behind if you compare yourself to others. Set your own standards, live for you, not for others. And then once you really start bringing your awareness to this and staying true to it, it's very hard to get into this very petty, reactive state. It's very hard. Why? Because you know who you are, you know what you value. You do get very reactive or say shoved in your head or stifled if you don't know. Okay, if you do know, it's the same as, let's just say I was telling you like, I hate your blue hair. Or you're like, okay, but I don't have blue hair. Do you, do you know for a fact you don't have blue hair? I know for a fact. Yeah, you don't so it's not gonna do anything, right? right? But if you don't know, you're like, oh, do, does he hate, do I have blue hair? Does he hate my blue hair? What, what, what? Right? Same thing here. Know your values, know where you're going, and then filter every piece of information, every action step through that. Okay, and the more you do it, you're gonna start seeing other people are gonna start adapting onto you. It's crazy, the stronger the reality, the stronger you could say the overall frame of who you are, what your life is, because most people have no idea, they'll just get sucked in. It's crazy, you'll see it, you'll be like, oh, interesting, right? Now, assuming you want to uplift the world, you will also teach them how to do that, but you're gonna start seeing, oh, people start flinching, oh, you know, they, they, what, they, they think suddenly that, that my standards are better, right? It's the same as if, say, you have a friend who, um, or people experience this too when they try to work on their social skills. They go out and say, you go to a bar and people are drinking. And they're like, well, what if I'm not drinking? Will I stand out? It's like, yeah, if you're trying to live up to societal standards, yeah, but if it's like, nope, my reality, my rules, and someone's like, are you not drinking? You're like, nope. And you just own it and really own it. You can't fake this. You're gonna be like, well, no, uh, but like, really, nah. You're gonna see that person start to doubt themselves. You might even see that person, you might even have friends like that where you're like going out and you're like, ah, I'm not drinking. And they will actually drink less or stop drinking as well to adapt onto your beliefs and your values. If you do have that strong frame. Okay, and then of course, the strongest frame is authenticity, congruency. It has to really be based on what you value. And you can also trace this back to your childhood, by the way. A lot of the things that you do care about, you will find some kind of evidence or proof or data in your past. So when I ask people back to that ideal life, like what's your ideal life? They're just like, well, I guess this or anything. It's like, look at your past as well. Look at things you tried, things you did, things you didn't do. What you liked, what fulfilled you, what didn't. And you're gonna get some information there, right? It's the same as like, find my purpose. Right? That's like asking someone, what's your favorite ice cream when they've had maybe two or three flavors? And it's like, there's millions. Pick. It's like, well, maybe that one. No, if you look at your past, it'll narrow down the choices. Right? Say you've tried like vanilla ice cream, didn't like it. Okay, any ice cream with vanilla in it? Nope. Narrow it down. So look at your past, audit in the present moment your values, and have that clear direction of where you're going. Okay? From that, too. To have a strong reality, you need to free yourself from things that trigger you. I'm sure you've heard this term, right? Get triggered. You'll probably, I mean, everyone talks about this now. Go on YouTube, you'll see crazy reactions, right? People getting triggered. What is someone getting triggered? It's when you could say your response is disproportionate to reality. When something inside of you that you've suppressed or repressed gets poked at. For example, a past traumatic experience. People get triggered when it comes to Social anxiety, a lot of fear around putting yourself out there, that's you getting triggered, right? Like if any of you here, if I'm like, hey, say I were to pick one of you at random to come up here and sing a song for 30 seconds. Guaranteed just the thought, you're probably like, oh, no, please don't pick me, right? And guaranteed, some of you, if I brought you up here, you'd be shaking and about to pee your pants. Now, is that reaction 
appropriate to reality? Yes or no? No. You sure? Yes. Right? Does feeling like you're about to die, is that appropriate to reality in a situation like this? No. If you come up here, nothing's going to happen to you. You're not going to die. So why is it that you react that way? Disproportionate response to reality linked to some kind of past traumatic experience. That there you must audit. That's a very obvious one. Another way people get triggered is through breakups. You'll see people run years, if not decades later from a breakup, still talking about that. Right? And you can audit this, by the way, in other people. It's usually easier to see in others, and then you can turn the mirror around on you. But look at people and ask yourself, what are some things that you know, they just might loop on for a long period of time? Right? They loop on through the years. Always back this one topic, or this one person, or this one relationship, or this one thing. Sure, right? A breakup, there's a grieving process, but it shouldn't run you forever. Disproportionate response to reality. Also what, if you're familiar with the work of Eckhart Tolle, it's known as a pain body attack. Right? So you can think of it as there's like these invisible chains, right, that just trigger you left and right, and people usually will either design their lives in a way to avoid getting triggered altogether, right? They shelter themselves, they live a very sheltered life, or they try to numb themselves to when they get triggered, also known as progressive desensitization, right? Let's just numb ourselves and power through. And the third way, and this is the way that really works, is you let go. The day you're no longer triggered is the day you're free. And then you also hear that famous saying, right? It's like, if you don't have a plan for yourself, someone else has a plan for you. We always think it's another person. We think it's the government, right? You want to know who has a plan for you? Past trauma. You don't process that. That's going to run you, okay? And then it gets really scary because not just that, but it also hijacks your focus and colors your reality. And you become more and more entrenched in this comfort zone of inauthenticity. It's absolutely insane.